Hello everyone, in today's video, I will be swatching out the different black watercolor paints from Daniel Smith. So I have also included some grays just for comparison purposes. So the inspiration for today's video actually came from questions and comments that asked me about the type of inks or paint that I use to create black and white sketches like this. So this was drawn with waterproof sketch ink. The name of the ink is called sketch ink and painted with sumi ink. So you can see the very textural look of the sumi ink. Sumi ink is basically ink created from grinding Chinese ink sticks. And this was also drawn with sketch ink and painted with sumi ink. So the sumi ink that I use, that's actually the liquid India ink from Winston Newton. It's called India ink, but it's actually sumi ink made from Chinese ink sticks. Okay, so let's uh, swatch them out one by one and compare the watercolor paint to the India ink and sumi ink. Let's start with lamp black. So lamp black is made of carbon black. And this carbon pigment is made from the residual soot from burning oil. You know those oil lamps? So the name actually comes from the practice of making oil lamps. Now the pigment, the texture or the granulation, it looks very fine, very evenly distributed. And next we have Lunar Black PBK11. This is made with magnetic black or iron oxide black. And from what I have read, it seems like there are some magnetic properties. So those magnetic properties create the granulation, contribute to creating the very unique granulation you see. Daniel Smith called their PBK11 Lunar Black. Winston Newton calls it Mars Black. Ivory Black, as the name suggests, it's made with charred ivory. But I guess nowadays it's really made with charred bone. So this looks like it has a warmer, a slightly warmer um, color temperature to it compared to the other two blacks, lamp black and lunar black. And this is black tourmaline. I bought this because the name has a black in it. Tourmaline Genuine. By the way, I don't really use black and I don't have a black in my watercolor palette because you can actually mix blacks with other colors like a cool red and cool green, alizara crimson and maybe viridian or thalo green, french ultramarine with burnt umber. By mixing your own blacks you have more versatility. You can uh, push the color to either blue or burnt umber or push it to red or green depending on how much paint you use but with black um, you can't push it to any color, it's just black. And this is neutral tint made with PBK6, PV19 and PB15. So this looks very dark as well, but there is a certain uh, cool, coolness to it in terms of color temperature, probably because of PB15 and PV19. And this is Soda Light Genuine. There is no pigment, it's just called Soda Light. And this has a cooler color temperature. It looks sort of like paint gray, but with more obvious granulation. And I happen to have paint gray on the right side, so let's compare. Soda light with Pins Grey. Daniel Smith's Pins Grey is made from a mix of PB29 Ultramarine and PBK9, which is Ivory Black. 
different manufacturers will have different formulas for their paints gray so paints gray here it looks like it almost looks like soda light on the left side perhaps slightly darker but but that's just uh um, that's just maybe because i have a lot more paint here and the last watercolor paint that i have here it's jeans gray jeans gray is a mix of pb29 and pbr7 that's french ultramarine and burnt sienna by the way this is one of the many grays released by daniel smith many months or a year or two ago steve mitchell for our mine of watercolor has a video on all the different grays available from daniel smith so if you want to uh, if you're interested to check out the grays you can watch this video which i will link in the video description below while waiting for the watercolor swatches to dry let me swatch out the india ink this is winston newton india ink this is very black by the way this paper that i'm using this is taylor round me aqua fine paper it's not 100 percent cotton so watercolor paint and inks on wet surfaces they don't really move that well if you want to see colors move like this on their own without additional brush work use 100 percent cotton watercolor paper i'm using this paper because it's cheap and the white of the paper it's very white and it shows the colors really well the strange thing about Winston Newton is they call their India ink India ink but for the Sumi ink they call it liquid India ink so you can see how confusing it can get so this is actually the ink that I use to paint my black and white sketches one thing about ink is they come from bottles like this so sometimes they may not be as convenient to bring around compared to watercolor tubes or pens and if you want to um, take the ink out sometimes it would be more convenient to have an eyedropper the swatches have dried so at a glance i can tell instantly neutral tint soda light paints gray and jeans gray they are on the cooler side neutral tint has a more violet hue or tint to it soda light paints gray and jeans gray they have this light blue tint to them as for lamb black luna black ivory black and black tourmarine they are just black um, quite neutral except for ivory black which looks like it's a bit warmer india ink is made by many companies so there is going to be variations for all those india inks out there this is how the winston newton india ink looks and it looks very similar to ivory black except there is no granulation here sumi ink looks very similar to luna black now one advantage of ink is they dissolve uh, way more easily compared to watercolor paint where you have to uh, spend some time to dissolve the paint with ink it's really easy and sumi ink it's very neutral it's neither warm or cool and i really love this texture which can be difficult to control but that's what's fun about it you have this very random texture sometimes and this is lunar black the watercolor paint if you want a color with the same texture and granulation as lunar black but with a cooler color temperature you can consider soda light so this is the beautiful granulation you can get with soda light on cold press paper ivory black has some granulation as well but when diluted it's not as obvious compared to lunar black granulation from black tomarine when diluted it's more obvious compared to ivory black these two they are quite similar except here there is more granulation and now let me show you some of the sketches i have painted with the various blacks so this one was as mentioned earlier painted with sumi ink 
the granulation here it's very beautiful this paper it's hot press paper so it's very smooth it has no texture and even so you can see the texture from the sumi ink and this is how the ink collects at the bottom because um, i believe i tilted the sketchbook to have the water flow down and this is how it compares to cold press paper this was painted with soda light genuine this color here but here you see there is this yellow tint to um, this sketch because this paper it's creamy it's off-white so there is this yellow tint beneath the soda light and this is how it looks on white paper it's very cool but here it's warm the texture here it's very obvious and there seems to be some sort of um, variation so it's not like it's the same color throughout even though i use the same paint throughout so you see this color here and this color here slightly different this is paints gray so the color temperature here is obviously cooler and if you use a lot of paint you can get very dark blacks as well this uh, color grays are from daniel smith and the blacks they are great for tonal studies for tonal studies you can also use other uh, colors like sepia here is um, a sketch painted with sepia and this sketch the last sketch that i want to show you this is painted with french ultramarine and burnt sienna so it's a mix so earlier on i mentioned that it's more versatile to mix your own blacks with um, two colors rather than just using blacks because you can push the color to cool or warm in this case when you can see different colors in the mix it makes the wash the colors look more interesting so here it's cooler and here it's warmer with more burnt sienna and this color looks like paint gray and here it looks more like ultramarine here as well for the really dark areas it looks very um, similar to black i just realized there's another sketch i want to show you so this was painted with graphite uh, for graphite uh, regardless of how much paint you use the graphite will never be as black as um, those blacks that you see earlier so this black was actually uh, something else but this is graphite black the reason for this is because uh, when you look at graphite i mean if you take a look at the graphite lead on the pencil that's already concentrated graphite it's not black it's still graphite so there is a limitation to graphite when it comes to achieving true black but sometimes you do not want blacks like this because the contrast can be quite uh, strong too strong too glaring it's really interesting to see the differences between the blacks side by side my favorites among all these colors are lunar black winsor newton sumi ink or any type of sumi ink and soda light genuine I like these three colors because of the granulation they can produce. I use these three colors mostly for tonal studies. I don't mix shadows with blacks or the grays because I find that when you add these colors to vibrant colors, they sort of kills the vibrancy and makes the mixed look dead. Anyway, uh, if you use blacks, let me know in the comment section what subjects you paint with them. And let me know what you do with them do you mix them with other colors oh before you go i just want to let you know that i am selling off some excess watercolor paint in half pens like this to make space to get more colors to test and also make more videos like this so to see the available colors that i am selling just visit the links in the video description below all right thanks for watching see you in the next video bye